peeps and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video now if you're new consider hitting that subscribe button giving this video a like it truly does help the channel out i am trying to hit 400 subscribers so hopefully you can help me get there also if you are new this is not my typical like filming area well you tend to catch me here during the holidays and i really wanted to showcase my halloween mantle let me go off screen here let's go ahead and get on with this video and welcome to night number nine we are almost there you guys do you see it do you see the finale because i do also for my new people everything included in this series is a first time watch for me night number nine and we're talking about 1990s misery this is a film that's directed by rob reiner and it is based off of a novel written by stephen king of the same name that came out in 1987. now i did not listen to this book if you're new i am a huge audible lover i don't have the attention span to actually read a book so audible it is and it works perfectly for me this is also book one of two of Stephen King's um, adaptation to movies that will be included within this series. The second one is going to be more of a book versus a movie comparison, but we'll get to that at night 11. That's going to be The Shining. Misery stars James Caan. I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong, but what's new here? Kathy Bates and Richard Farnsworth. Farnsworth? I honestly went into this movie thinking it was about something completely different like with the name misery I thought it was about somebody being miserable or having a miserable life something with misery so famed novelist Paul Sheldon who's played by Khan he is an author of a successful like romance novel with a lead character named misery Chastain so misery came from is from a character in his story who has a lot to do with it don't mind, don't, don't take that as a, well, what the heck? No, well, that particular character has a lot to do, obviously, with the movie because of the famed, crazy-ass Annie Wilkins, who's played wonderfully by Kathy Bates. Paul is pretty much done with this character. He's done with this series. He wants to move on away from this genre. He wants to do bigger and better things. And he ends up basically killing off this misery character in his latest um, novella. Fortunately, when he does finish his, um, his novel, coming back to New York, he's like in a car accident. He like flips over the side and he, again, we're in a blizzard kind of deal. But wouldn't you know it, his luck or Annie's luck is there saw the whole thing kind of like lurking and seeing him because she knows everything about him, knows everything about his books, this character. All that good stuff like literally like number one obsessive crazy ass like dangerous fan here you guys you already know the thing gonna go well you already know so basically she ends up saving his life and she's also happens to be a nurse or an ex-nurse i mean we really don't know what happened you know from that accident i mean could an accident like that really destroy his life like that and i don't know because i'm thinking annie did that shit I really do i think she did something i think maybe the only thing that really happened was this his shoulder his arm i think it was dislocated or well, broken right that's probably really all that happened and like she messed up his legs to keep him captive because his legs were like jacked up and then we'll get to his legs later on as well because some other stuff happens to that poor man's legs i mean the fact that he's able to walk still later on is a miracle on its own you guys i talk about physical therapy stuff okay so that's james Conn's character we're gonna move on to kathy bates now she plays like i said unhinged crazy ass number one fan stalker uh ex-nurse ex-convict i think she was i think she was in prison crazy like cuckoo looky looky do g willingness i don't know you guys she doesn't cuss and she's like gosh darn it literally you guys every time that she would just lose her shit or her shenanigans i don't know you guys i'm i mean not cuss here it's like a switch would just like go off and like flip or whatever because she could be all like gee williness and then she'll go to like no you didn't <laughs> let me get my sledgehammer kind of stuff and every time she went kind of bananas on him i'm just like one thing I do really like about King's writing is the character development that he does give these characters. Mind you, again, I didn't listen to the book, so I don't really necessarily know how more 
development of these characters are, are but I feel like the story itself did a really great job with it but I do of course still want to read the book especially now because those stuff gets lost as per the other movie we're going to be talking about that's my biggest issue with that but the fact that he's able to write the woman here as being the strong one not the victim here and in this case um Paul Sheldon is the victim, the man. And the other two actors in this movie, uh, Richard and Francis, I really loved them here as well. They played this older married couple. It's like a small town. I'm assuming not too much crime going on. The fact that we just have this older sheriff and his deputy. I never saw anybody else in the station there. So some people could argue that when a particular kind of situation happens, like why doesn't he have backup? And... I'm here to kind of defend that, that, well, again, it's a small town. There's this really cute scene that when they're like driving and they're looking for clues, Virginia, who is, is the wife of Buster, is like trying to get a little handsy with him while she's driving and he's just like, look, when you're in this car, you're my deputy. You're not my wife. This film is exceptional from every angle, guys. The acting, the writing, the direction, cinematography, set tone soundtrack i really like those close-up shots that we get from paul while he's trying to look around at his house or to get back to his room before she catches him james Conn, the way that he was able to play paul sheldon the vulnerability again that he had to convey the way that he was also able to keep his cool because again he is at this point a victim he is basically kidnapped you guys and he may look at any like oh shenanigans because here, again, people be going so fast through the damn street, you guys. There's literally a stop sign, like, right there. The way that he's able to keep his cool, you guys, in these certain, certain situations, because he knows that he is fudged because he can't move. He can't talk. Well, he can talk, but he can't move. He can't walk. He has to depend on Annie to move him from one location to another. And then the fact that that hobbling scene happens here, you guys. I won't show it, I won't show it, don't worry. But that's probably the most disturbing part in this movie, the most iconic part of it as well is when he, when well not he, when she is breaking his legs with that hammer to keep him there because he was getting better. And we can't have that because you know, she, he has to finish that film, that film, that script. Ooh, I just realized I didn't tell you that part. Well, like I said earlier, Paul Sheldon kills off misery. Annie, number one fan, is not happy about this. You dirty bird. How could you? Misery Chastain cannot be dead. Misery spirit is still alive. I don't want her spirit! You guys, she has a pig meme after that damn character. Like, literally upset. Like, has that, like, a Paul Sheldon misery book series alter going on? Like, she, like, forces him to rewrite this manuscript. I know I wonder all over the place all the time. He knows that he has to buy his time. He knows he can't move. He knows he's restricted. So he he can't afford to go all kinds of like blah, 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 who you think you are because he knows that this lady is like and can literally make his life like 10 times worse seeing that he's there confined. So he might be looking at her like eternally. He's probably like, oh my God. But like he knows he, like he's a survivor you guys like he is a survivor and it's all like huh. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much like my overall like thoughts and take on this movie Um, again, if you haven't already give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet Don't forget to hit the notification bell. So you'll be notified each time that I post something new so Misery it is a great Movie you guys. I absolutely loved it. It is such like Oh, it's so good, you guys. I just, I, I don't even know how to, like, get all, like, fancy with it. It's a good damn movie. I know some people don't like watching older movies. I have been told that within the comment section whenever I do, like, first-time watches. You guys, don't sleep on these older movies. Like, don't do it. I know I have been sleeping on them, but, like, not intentionally. It's just movies I hadn't seen. But, like, now I'm, like, on them because you're missing out on great, great classic movies. Like, I understand why these are so beloved. And I love it. Also, this is one of Stephen King's movies. I'm so glad I didn't forget to mention this. The only movie, uh, well, his only like 
book adaptation movies, whatever, that has won an Oscar, you guys. Not Shawshank Redemption, but Misery. Kathy Bates won an Oscar for playing Annie Wilkins, and very much well deserved. I loved her character. So with that said, I am gonna be giving Misery a large popcorn. You guys, no joke, I picked some pretty darn good movies this year, like really. I have been giving a large popcorns, like left and right. Seen Misery, let me know down below. What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Was it just not for you? Have you read the book or listened to it if you are also an honorable lover like myself? Is the book, what well, is the movie like pretty true to the book? I'm sure the book is like 10 times better because the book is always better. But like how true to the book is it? Is the book gonna make me hate this movie? I hope it doesn't. Like I'm so scared to, to listen to it because I really, really love the movie. Well, if anything, maybe I'll bring it out to a medium. I don't, I don't know, but I'm afraid. But let me know down below. All right, guys, that's it for me tonight. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.